Meet Genevieve Bell, astro <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Meet Genevieve Bell, anthropologist and technologist here at the Australian National University. She combines anthropology and technology and explores the social and cultural aspects of ubiquitous computing, a lot about our future. And here she, there's the YouTube for a Boyer lecture she gave last year. Now she's also co-written this book, Divining a Digital Future, about ubiquitous computing. And I sat down with her just outside her office in the new 3A Institute at Australian National University. Uh, the 3A stand for Autonomy and Agency and Assurance. My name is Genevieve Bell. And you are a cultural anthropologist, technologist, futurist, an expert in the relationship between technology and humans. Is that right? Yes. All right. So, <laughs> Among other things. <laughs> are we alone in the universe? Of course not. Of course not? Of course not. Why do you say that? Well, I mean, I guess because as a good anthropologist, there's so many bits of that question I want to ask you what you mean by. Okay, I'm going to do that. What do you mean we? What That's do you what mean I'm alone? You. What do you mean the universe? Okay, next question. In the question, are we alone, what does the word we mean for you? <laughs> well, you could be an anthropologist. That's right. excellent. Uh, well, that's always a really good question. Who is the we in that sentence? Well, are humans alone in the universe? Is that the question? Half the people I ask think that we as humans. The other half think we the life forms on Earth. Interesting. And then I guess I would ask having grown up and worked in lots of different places, whether we isn't necessarily just the things that are living. So are we alone as a lot, you know, are we alone as humans? Well, I would argue clearly not. You know, does the we there include? But when you say are we alone as humans, what do you say clearly not? Why do you say that? Um, because for lots of human cultures, the we-ness isn't just about humans. It's about the environment around you, it's about the things that are living in that environment that aren't human things. Some of those things would not be counted inside the Western scientific tradition as living things. In your 2017 Boyer lectures, you investigated what it means to be human. So what does it mean to be human? I don't think I answered that question on purpose. Oh, you, you, that was the title, but you didn't answer it. I asked the question, what does it mean to be human? I didn't say I knew. Is it an important question? Um, I think it is a question that we are asking again in a different context as technology comes along. So we can talk about, you know, would life somewhere else make us less special? Are we alone in the universe? Those are one set of questions that raise a very particular set of anxieties. I think there's been pressure put again on the notion of being human by the possibility of technologies that start to have human capacity. So things like the bundle of technologies that form artificial intelligence are sometimes seen as scary because they threaten to uh, perform a set of functions that humans like to imagine are theirs and theirs alone, i.e. human scale intelligence. And so the notion of what it means to be human is a conversation that happens simultaneously as we find bacteria <laughs> or the possibility of bacteria in other parts of the universe as much as it happens when we start to say what would it mean to have a technology that could do things that were historically reserved for humans. I'm sympathetic with the view that says the quest to know if we are alone in the universe is an important quest. The quest to ensure that the place we are currently living is sustainable ought to be equally valuable and important. Part of this astrobiological program is to try to figure out how we, life got on this planet yep, and in then order use to that see information yep. to figure out whether it's elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the challenges with the question about how we got to where we are and the kind of unpacking the human project is that it is often used as a cudgel and a weapon and it becomes, you know, ideas that are weaponized. Think about the way, you know, Darwin's early theoretical articulations were used to say that people of color were not as evolved as white people because they were closer looking to apes. Stories about how humans came into being have always been used since we have told those stories yeah. as ways of saying, we are better than them, yes, yes. we are superior to that. Yes. Think about the, you know, we are not mixed race, we are one race, mm. so you know, we have a much 
clearer set of <laughs> residual you know, genetic markers to say we've always been here and we weren't other people. So, you know, is there a scientific project in a you know, relatively instrumentalist way to say can we backtrace the origins of things that make us human and you know, find new ways of telling that story using greater resolution of genetic material because we have greater sample sets of genetic data? Absolutely. Will that science happen absent a set of moral values that get put on top of it? No. So, you know, should the scientific project go ahead? Oh, absolutely. Will people use that scientific project for things it wasn't intended for? Yeah. And do we need to think about those things as having a dialogue? I think we probably do.